Hi, and welcome to FLVS Full Time. Today I want to show you how to log in and get started with your courses. First of all, use this address at the top of the screen to log in. Once you are at that page, make sure that you bookmark it or make it your home page so you have easy access to all of your courses. Once you enter using your login and password, your screen will look something like this. You will see your name at the top and left side of your screen. And you will see the uh, the top right, you will see the school year and semester you're working in. Alerts, messages, and upcoming events will show up in these three top boxes. The view calendar link will take you to the school calendar for the year. Feature programs um, screen contains all of the courses you're enrolled in and other enrollment information. When you click on each course link, it will take you to the gradebook and assessments for each course. This icon right here opens up fo the Focus Messenger, which allows you to communicate with each teacher as well. If you prefer to log in with a single sign-on, use the UCompass portal screen on the right. Just click on the drop-down menu and select the course that you want to enter, then click Log In. Once you log in, the screen will look something like this. This is called the forcing screen. The teacher is using a forcing slide to show you some important information before you start working in the course. I'm going to use the music of the world as an example. The teacher in this course is, put, is posting this forcing slide to let everyone know what the lessons are that need to be completed that week. Your teacher may also use a forcing slide to communicate news, important information, and even your pace chart for the semester. If you see a forcing slide to access your course, just locate the Enter the Course link at the bottom left of the screen. This is your announcement page. If your teacher is not using a forcing slide, this is the first screen you will see. This screen will look very similar for most of your courses. The only difference will be the name of the course, your teacher name, and contact information. You will notice that different teachers have different assistant principals listed as contacts. Either way, you will have their contact information available to you every time you log in. On this page, your teacher will post other important information about your course, including live lesson information. This is very important, so make sure that you locate it as soon as you log in, as you're expected to attend live lessons every week. Your teacher may post the link and schedule for your live lessons for th this course. If you miss a lesson, make sure to contact your teacher and ask her where you can locate the recording for the lessons that you missed. Now let's get started. Once you're ready to start working in your course, you need to locate your navigation. This thick black bar at the top is your navigation bar. This home button will bring you back to the announcement page anytime. Your email button is very important. This is where you will receive email from your teacher and the school. You want to make sure that you check this one at least daily. Right here, you will see the subject of the email, who sent it, and when it was sent. To open it, just click on the subject name. This teacher has sent a note to the student, so it's important that you read it. Uh, if you wanted to reply to the teacher, you can reply from right here. Let's go to the main menu. There's a lot of information in this drop-down menu. The course information section is important, so make sure you review it. You will find information like your teacher contact, how to get started, tips to stay on pace, the standards that are covered in the course, and resources such as academic integrity, so make sure you review. You can access your email from here, and there are many other links that you can use, and you will learn more about later in the course. Right now, I want to talk to you about your gradebook, assessments, and lessons. These are the most important links, so they are the ones right at the top. Let's start with lessons. This is where you will first go when you're ready to start with your course. This is your lessons homepage. For the music of the world um, lessons, um, you have a get started section, segment one and segment two. Other courses, like the Spanish 2, may look a little bit different, but you still will have all of your modules and lessons right here. I'll come back and show you how navigation can also be different, but pretty much you have all the same sections in each course. 
Think of your lessons page as your virtual textbook. When you click on segment, you will see that you have modules. Think of each module as a chapter in that textbook. If we go to module one, we can see that there are 11 lessons for this module. Let's view a lesson and let's take a look at some of the tools that you have right here. Right at the top, you have your home button, which will take you back to the lessons homepage. You can also navigate using the previous and forward button. You have tools on the left here that tell you that you can move from one module to the next and one lesson to the next, or even one section or page to the next. You can see here that this lesson only has one page. You can also see it right here at the top right. This is important because you want to make sure that you view all the pages in each lesson. Since this lesson is only one page, you want to make sure that you scroll down to view all the information. This lesson also has a glossary, which is um, a pop-up window, and a note-taking section, which is also a pop-up window. You can also change the way that your lesson looks with these settings. Let's look in Spanish 2 and see what a lesson looks like here. We know to go to the lessons page and each drop down menu will take us to the different lessons. Here, instead of pages, we have different tabs that will take us to different parts of the lesson. You also have uh, backwards and forward buttons, an appendix, which is the glossary, and the home button that will take us back to the lessons page. The Asignacion tab or assignment tab in the Spanish course shows up when you have an assignment that is or it needs to be completed after each section. Not all lessons have assignments that need to be completed, but when you do, you will have either a page or a notification at the bottom of the page letting you know that there is an assignment you need to complete. In the Music of the World course, the assignment notification is at the bottom. It tells us to read through the pages of the lesson, complete the practice problems, and check the answers. We also need to go to the assessment area in the course to complete the assessment and submit it for a grade. Regardless of which course you're taking and regardless of the way that your course looks, you will always have to go to the assessments to complete your assignments and receive a score. Let's go back to our main menu. And this time we're going to click on assessments. So let's say you completed the lesson, you're ready to submit your assignment, you go to this um, section of the course and think of it like your virtual backpack. All of your homework is here and when you're ready to submit it, that's when you will turn it in. Let's click on the assignment name and here's our submission. Sometimes you will see extra instructions right here in the details section. You can use the student comments box to type directly and complete your assessment, or you can complete your assessments in a text file like a Word document. And all you need to do is attach it, just like you would with an email. Find the Add Files button and then locate your file. I've saved the sample assessment here, so I'm going to click and it's ready to attach. If I needed to delete it, I can always delete it right here. The reset button will erase anything you typed in the comments box. Be careful with that button. You can save for later if you want to come back and make some um, revisions before submitting to the teacher. But when you're ready to submit to your teacher, make sure to check Submit for Grading. Notice the button change from Save for Later to Submit for Grading. Let's go ahead and submit, see what happens. You will get a notification, and when you go to your assessments, you will notice that 1.07 has disappeared from your screen. Since you have turned it into your teacher, it's no longer in your virtual backpack or assessment section. It is now in the teacher's gradebook. In talking about gradebook, let's go and look at our gradebook. It is very important that you check your gradebook um, to monitor your progress through the course. Let me show you how. We go to the main menu, select Gradebook, and here we are. At the top left, you will see an overview of your progress. Right now, if this was your course, it says you have completed 11%. That means two out of 18 assessments have been completed and 16 more assessments remain. And you will see your current grade right here as well. When you look at the assignments, you will notice they're color-coded. 
you have some other information too, like the score percentage, possible points, points earned, and when it was submitted. You can use these filters to organize your assessments. Anything um, that you see in blue, like 1.07, which is the one we just submitted, will show us in a status of submitted, and it's waiting for the teacher to be graded. Notice that 2.09 has also been submitted and needs to be graded. That's why you won't see any percentage right here. We have submitted 1.08 discussion questions, and it's in green. That is because you obtain a score of 10 out of 10 possible points. That is 100%. That was really good. That is a passing grade, so it will always show in green. Well, this one is highlighted in red. Let's guess why. We only have a score of 5 out of 10, which is 50%. 50% is not a passing grade, so anything below a 60% will show in red. You might be wondering, what can I do about these failing grades? Well, here at FLVS, we encourage you to resubmit your work and review your lessons. Sometimes you might need repetition to get that concept, right? Let's take a look and see why we got a 50% in this assignment. Let's click on the assignment. And here are the comments from the instructor. Good job on this assignment. Remember to include part B to receive a full score. Oh, we skipped a part. It could be that we weren't sure about what we needed to do or maybe we just forgot. In any case, reach out to your teacher if you need help. And if you're ready to resubmit and just forgot, you can type right here in the student comments, just like you did from your assessments. If you prefer, you can also just attach a revised version of your assignment. Let's say that we did that. So let's click on Add Files. And here it is, 1.9 revised. I'm going to go ahead and attach that one submit for grading and send it to the teacher. Look at what happened to my submission. 1.09 is no longer red. Now showing blue as if it's waiting for the teacher to, um, to grade and the status is resubmitted. Hopefully this helps you understand your gradebook a little bit better. Something else that you might want to be aware of uh, from your main menu is the technical support page. This is right here to help you contact the FLBA Support Center anytime you need help with your course, 24 hours a day, seven days a week. I would recommend that you also write this number somewhere outside of your computer in case you need help with your computer and cannot access the course or view this page. I hope this is helpful. If you have any other questions as you progress in your course, make sure to reach out to your teacher and have a wonderful school year.